Hi everybody, it's Ann Quinn from Carnegie Public Library, and I'm so excited to be one of your guest readers uh, to read The Adventures of the South Pole Pig. And I was so excited about this book, I decided to fly to Antarctica and see what it was really like down there. So it is so cold, it is so freezing, I don't see how Flora does all that she does. So join me for chapters 23 and 24, and let's see what happens. It's starting to get really, really exciting. Chapter 23. The first thing Flora did when she scrambled off the boat and onto solid ground was to look for her friend. A few dogs had made it to safety, and Oscar was one of them. Have you seen Sophia? She asked him through chattering teeth. Oscar was dripping wet and trembling so hard it looked as if he might shake himself off his feet. He lowered his head but did not answer. A chain, still broken, to a, still attached to a broken piece of wood, hung from his neck. Another dog was more helpful. Flora found out that only he and four other dogs had been released from their chains in time to jump into the first lifeboat. Oscar had been rescued later from the freezing waters. None of the others had survived. Flora felt like weeping. Cats were not great swimmers. In her bones, she knew that her small friend had never had a chance once the water rushed in. Still, she looked around desperately. Large emergency boxes from both lifeboats were dragged ashore. Tools, dry blankets, and cans of food came out, and when the boxes were empty, the men used axes to chop them up and build a fire. The blankets were laid down around the fire, and a mangy mix of teeth-chattering men and dogs huddled as close as they could. Some of the men dashed back out in the lifeboat to see if they could find any more supply boxes or bits of wood in the water. When they had warmed up a bit, others began building walls of snow for a shelter. There was still very little said. Flora gave up her search and nosed under a corner of a blanket. She now realized how cold she had become. It is very cold here. She was shaking harder than she thought possible, but the cold in her bones was nothing compared to the ice in her heart. Sophia could be sharp tongued and selfish, but without a friend to keep Flora's hope alive all those weeks in the belly of the ship, she didn't know if she would have survived. Now, Sophia was gone. Rolled up in several blankets, the captain lay on the snow beside the fire, eyes closed. He did not move. Across the fire from Flora, Alaric and Oscar sat, shaking together. The boy had taken Oscar's chain off and was wrapped in a blanket. Floral, Floral was startled to see Alaric's heart beating inside his blanket. She watched amaze as his check rimbled and bump. Then it popped out. This was no heart. It was an orange cat with pointy ears, and it looked around with wide eyes. When it saw Flora, it pushed itself free and bounded over to her. Sophia! Flora squealed, and Sophia purred and rubbed up against Flora. By some miracle, they had both survived. Now that she had a friend and a teammate beside her, Flora thought she could face whatever challenges lay ahead. When Flora blinked her eyes awake the next morning, the low sun buttered the bumpy snow a light yellow. Boxes that weren't there the night before had been stacked nearby. Sophia's fur tickled her nose from where she was tucked in Flora's chin. For a moment, all the fear and sadness from the day before overwhelmed Flora. She felt her heart twist for the brave dogs that didn't make it. Still, here she was, alive, with Sophia at her side. In the night, somebody had covered her with a second blanket. The dogs, on the other hand, had moved away from the blankets. They lay in a rough circle in the snow, with their, no with their noses pointed to the center. Flora imagined that they were probably remembering and mourning their lost companions. As the day continued, Flora watched the men finish the walls of the snow cabin and place one of the lifeboats on top as a roof. They did not sing as they worked. 
They did not shout or curse or laugh or clump. Each footstep of their heavy boots landed as softly as a cat's paw. They carried the captive inside the shelter. Floor had not heard him say a word, but color had returned to his cheeks. Floor poked her head under her blanket. Let's go take a look at this place, she said to the fluff of orange. Sophia didn't stir. Floor brought her head back out and blinked in the sun. The training in the hold had been hard, but Flora was stronger and more confident now. She was ready to learn new lessons, and she could not ignore her curiosity about the Antarctic. Sophia's words sounded muffled. There's nothing to see. True, the land was white in every direction. Not a plant, not a tree, not any spot of green or brown was visible outside the little camp, except for a jumble of ice blocks that stuck out of the snow here and there, the terrain was also flat. I'm going to go see it anyway, Flora eased out from under the warm blanket, careful not to step on Sophia. The wind bit into Flora's ribs as she looked first one way and then another. In the distance, a low ridge of mountains rose out of the white. In the other direction, the white took on a slight shade of blue where the ice met the sea and bobbed on the waves. She shivered as she remembered floating in the lifeboat out there. Flora decided to explore a wide circle around camp. The edge of camp felt even colder than the center, and by the time Flora had traveled only halfway, even her teeth were cold. The stiff air froze the inside of her nostrils. There were no smells. This was a land that kept secrets. Sophia made complaining noises as Flora nosed back under her blanket, bringing in the sharp polar breeze for a moment. When darkness came, Flora noticed how hungry she was, and she realized she hadn't seen anybody eating in camp. She snuggled up close to Sophia for warmth and promised herself that she would not be the first to grumble over something they must all be feeling. The next morning, the men brought out a large square of material and spread it out next to the snow cabin. Is this some kind of special blanket? Flora asked Oscar. And Oscar took his nose out from under his tail and looked up. Canvas, he said. They use it for covering loads or making a shelter. The edges of the canvas were marked in the snow with shovels, and then it was folded up again. Through the day, the men took turns digging out a rectangle, a little smaller than the size of the canvas. All the snow they took out was piled around the perimeter. They chopped and shoveled, piled and padded until the lower floor was flat and the snow walls were even, except for an opening with snow stairs going down. Finally, they unfolded the canvas, draped it over the walls, pulled it tight and packed snow on the roof's edges so the canvas would stay put. When the shelter was finished, they moved their tools and supplies inside. Flora was curious about everything and took quick breaks from her blanket to poke her nose into the new shelter as often as she could without getting stepped on or noticed by Big Amos. He stayed under the canvas, growling orders to the men about where to stack the supplies that had been salvaged. None of this activity was of any interest to the dogs, who mostly slept or stretched and then slept some more. But all of that changed when bags filled with frozen fish were carried in. The dog sat up and sniffed the air. A couple tried to sneak through the doorway but were chased out. It wasn't long before Amos emerged with his arms full of cans. The men built up the fire again opened the cans and put them carefully on the flames. When enough time had passed, they used sticks to lift the hot cans off the fire and sat around eating with their knives. From the smells, four could tell that they had warmed tomatoes, beans, and chicken soup for their first Antarctic meal. She was disappointed that none of it was shared with the animals who watched every bite disappear. Even Sophia poked her head out to look, but the feelings changed to joy 
when Amos brought over a bag of fish. He opened the bag and began chopping the frozen fish into pieces. The dog set up a frenzy of barking and whining. But any that came too close got a curse and a kick, and they soon learned that those that sat quietly were fed first. Flora ate her fish alongside Sophia. It was icy and crunchy and gone in three bites, but it was delicious. While the animals were eating, the men took a bundle of blankets into the canvas roof shelter, then disappeared inside the snow cabin next door. Flora followed the dogs into the shelter and watched them claim their sleeping spots. The men had laid the blankets around the perimeter of the shelter. Each dog stood a moment on the spot he had picked and looked around to see if he had a challenger. Then nose down, each circled three or four times around, pawing at the blanket to fluff it up before sinking into a tight ball and bringing tail over muzzle. When all six dogs were settled inside, Flora trotted back to see where Sophia was trying to keep warm near the dying fire. Come see what's happening. We need to choose a sleeping spot. It won't matter because it's impossible to get warm any, anywhere in this place, Sophia complained, but she got up. Against the snow, she looked more orange than ever. She hurried across the white ground of the doorway like a cat-shaped sunset. At the entrance, Sophia stopped and let Flora go in first. Flora hoped the dogs had heard about the job she and Sophia had done on the rats and would accept them as friends. She walked cautiously down the few steps. As nervous as Flora felt around the dogs, she could only imagine what Sophia was feeling. But the cat bravely made her way to a blanket in the farthest corner. Then she nosed down underneath the corner and disappeared. Flora carefully sat down on the blanket Sophia had chosen for them and looked around. Oscar was on the nearest blanket, but except for raising his eyebrows, he did not move. None of the other dogs seemed to notice the newcomers. Nose down, Flora began to circle her blanket as she had seen the dogs do. Lie down before you step on me, Sophia hissed. Flora set, settled down and no one barked. No one made an unfriendly comment. She had been accepted into the sledding team home, which already smelled like dog, but was surprisingly warm. Chapter 24. The dogs didn't seem to have the energy to do anything, but Flora scrambled up with the rising sun and an empty stomach. If yesterday's three bites of fish were any indication, they were very low on food. They would have to get it from somewhere else and they would need sled pullers for the job. She wanted to be one of those pullers, but as she peered out from the doorway of the shelter, she realized she had not seen any sleds. They must not have made it off the ship. It made Flora sad to imagine the sturdy gliding machines on the floor of the sea, and it made her panic a little to think that even if there was a place to find food, there was no way to get there or to bring anything back. And when would another ship be heading this way? Well, Flora wasn't going to let herself sink into gloom. She decided to get used to the cold. She wanted to be ready to work just in case. And what good was a puller with cold feet? But the moment she stepped outside, the cold became painful. It was the wind that cut the hardest. She nosed into it and felt her nostrils become crusty with frost. Her eyeballs stung, her breath caught in her lungs, and she couldn't release it without some effort. She wondered if her extra hair was doing anything to protect her. Flora turned her back to the wind. Don't be a baby, she told herself. She trotted out and began to make a wide circle in front of the two shelters. Her knees hurt. Romp, she told herself. Leap about, frisk. She tried to take a little leap, and found that there was no lift in her legs. In fact, she couldn't even feel them any longer. Behind her, she heard a shout and turned. It was Alaric. He looked twice as big in his coat, which seemed to have one or two coats underneath, and he was waving something high in the air. Flora stumbled back to him as best as she could, and he knelt down beside her. Pulling his gloves off, he buttoned her into a dark red coat. 
He rolled up the sleeves so her front hooves showed. But when she tried to walk, the bottom of the coat dragged on the ground. She couldn't avoid stepping on it. Er Alaric shook his head. It's too big. Wait right here. And he returned with a knife and a length of rope that helped Flora out of the coat. After he cut a wide strip off the bottom, he buttoned her back into the coat and he cinched it around her middle with the rope. She looked back and tried to see herself. She was sure she looked funny. She took a few steps and stopped. Her coat whispered with every move, but no part dragged on the ground, and she felt so cozy. Even her eyeballs felt warmer. When Sophia woke up, she made a surprise sound and walked around Flora slowly, then woke up Oscar to look. They sat together and stared. Oscar cleared his throat. <clears throat> I wondered how you were going to make it out here. This answers one of my biggest questions. And Sophia nodded. I don't have to worry about my bed partner turning into a pig sickle any longer. And Flora stepped back out into the pale light. And she began to run around the camp. She pushed hard until the cold air burned her throat. Then she ran even more. The lifelessness of the land still amazed her. There were no seals or polar bears or rabbits disappearing into their holes. No mice or birds, not even a single seagull. I sure wouldn't mind if there was a little color out there, she said to one of the other dogs when she returned to the shelter. And the dog's eyes twitched as if he were surprised to be spoken to, but he didn't respond. She tried again. Even a spot of green poking out of the snow would do my heart good. The dog gave a big sigh, and he turned his nose in under his tail. Flora looked around the cave, but one thing's for sure, she said in a louder voice, a little run around the camp loosens your lungs and makes breathing easier. It was as, it was as if she wasn't there. No one even turned to look at who was talking. Even Oscar and Sophia were ignoring her, curled up together sleeping. One morning, after Flora came back inside from a romp, she heard a dog telling the others that the men were having a meeting. Flora leaned over to Oscar. We should have a meeting too. Sophia moved to her side and Oscar came closer. Plans are afoot, he said, and Flora's heart thrilled. She was pretty sure that any plans would involve pulling something, even if there were no sleds. <sighs> Oscar suddenly lifted his head, and he crossed his eyes in an effort to look down his nose. A hair was stuck to one of his nostrils. He huffed again, and the hair took flight, fluttering down to the bunker, fluttering down to the blanket. Cat hair, he muttered. At least it doesn't smell like a dog, Sophia said. Flora coughed politely <clears throat> and sat down. You said there were plans afoot. What happens to the expedition now? No dock sled, said Oscar. No expedition. Couldn't they send a replacement ship with a new sled? No ship, said Oscar. No replacement, no expedition. There is a new project now, and it is called staying alive as long as possible. We might be lucky and get rescued, or the men might try to sail away in the lifeboats and sa save themselves. That's probably what they're meeting about. Mm -hmm. Sophia was quiet, but Flora knew she was listening. No matter what, it means that food has to last a long, long time. Flora nodded. The once-a-day fish feedings had gotten even smaller. Oscar went on. Actually, there is more food out in the snow. Flora stopped herself from jumping up. She remembered Oscar talking about this, but it didn't seem important before. About four months ago, the captain brought a different crew and two dog teams, including me, to the Antarctic. We landed not more than a mile from here. Each team pulled big boxes of food on sleds to two separate food stations out there, and Oscar pointed his nose out to the snowy wilderness. We did that so those on the final expedition wouldn't have to carry so much food with them. The first food station is at least three days from here. But we don't have a sled to bring back the supplies, Flora finished. Sophia's tail twitched. Let's not get too worried. 
We should know a lot more as soon as the men finish up their meeting. Um, yep, Oscar muttered. I'm a little tired. Better take a nap. Outside, there were shouts and the sound of work being done. Flora walked to the doorway and saw men moving about with a new sense of purpose. The extra lifeboat with canned food already loaded inside had been set down on its belly as if it were about to sail away on the snow. Ropes tied to the front laid stretched out ready for pullers. Wow, she had to tell Oscar about this. The dogs were sniffing and talking to one another in low voices. Alaric was in a terrible mood as he helped carry cans. I didn't sign on to this crew to be a nursemaid, he complained out loud. No one was listening, but they didn't stop him. I don't know anything about taking care of a broken leg and busted ribs. Why do I have to stay in this nowhere place? Flora didn't have to go tell Oscar. He slipped by her and saddled up beside the boat, pacing and looking more excited than she had seen him in a long time. Oscar, she ran up to him. They're going to use the boat as a sled, aren't they? They're going to go get the food, right? Nope. Oscar didn't seem to be able to stop walking and sniffing. They decided to pull the boat to a place where they can safely put it in the water, sail off, and flag down a passing ship to come rescue the captain and a few others who will have to stay in camp, the poor bums. Flora wanted to do a crazy dance, pulling. It was about to start. Big Amos had made sort of a table in front of the men's cabin out of wooden boxes, and he was sharpening his knives. When Flora walked by, he got very excited and dropped to his knees at the doorway. Come to me, my little sausage. And Flora backed away hastily, but she wasn't fast enough, and his hands ran inside her coat over her sides and legs. Oh, not so fat now. No worry. Still a nice pig. You come back to my place tomorrow. Tomorrow, she hoped, she'd be out doing her job far away from him. So let's hope that Flora stays away from Big Amos because I think he has plans for her. So keep reading. Uh, I'm loving this story. I don't think that I would be brave enough to really be in the Antarctic. I don't handle cold that well. But I want to encourage everybody to come to the library because after being closed for almost a year, we are now open. So please come after school or on Saturdays. We're open from 10 to 2. I would love to see everybody back at the library. I would love to talk books with all of you. What are you reading besides this great book? And let me help you with any of your questions or if you need some guidance on new books to read. So uh, enjoy reading The Adventures of the South Pole Pig. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.